السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ الحمدللہ الحمدللہ نحمده ونستعینه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوکل علیه ونعوذ باللہ من شرور انفسنا ومن سیئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما صلى الله على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم صلى الله على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم بلغ العلا بكماله كشف الدجا بجماله حسنت جميع خصاله صلوا عليه وآله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله أستغفر الله إن الله غفور رحيم Respected brothers and sisters, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given us some tawfiq to spend some time for deen listening to Quran and Sunnah Let's say, Alhamdulillah. As you know, the topic of discussion today about the classification of Holy Quran. Brothers and sisters, we like, we like classification. And as you see, you know, the, when the election year comes, the politician, they always say middle class. So, there is a classification based on the, your income, your education. Some people, what they say, higher class, then middle class and low class. So this is a classification we see based on your earnings and your education. And during the election year, the politician, they always address the middle class because they are the majority people of the society and the politician you know they will not win if they don't get enough support from the middle class so this is one classification as you remember Karl Marx Lenin they have another classification they divided the whole mankind into one class that is called bourgeois Maybe many of us are not familiar today with this word. Bourgeois means those who are very rich, wealthy people, those who accumulated a lot of wealth. At the same time, there is another class, according to them, according to Karl Marx, Lenin, that proletari. Proletari means those who doesn't have much wealth, they are very poor, all they have, they have two hands, they are the working class. So see, according to Karl Marx, Lenin, there is a classification where bourgeois and proletari for their political gain, they divided the mankind. If you look at the, you know, India, they have another classification like Brahman, Khatriya, Shudra, and so on. But there are so many other classifications but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the universe, he does not recognize any of those classifications. 
only classification that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Holy Quran mention based on faith, based on your Iman. So according to the Holy Quran, there are three classes of people. Number one, the believers, the mu'min, the people who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messengers. So this is one category of people. Then another category of people, those who don't believe, those who are atheists, those who are mushrikeen, those who are, those who are idol worshippers. So this is another classification, another group of people. And the third one, third group is called munafiqin, the hypocrites. They claim as believers, but uh, you know, we'll discuss about the features and other things. So these are the three groups of people according to the Holy Quran. The mu'min, the believers, then the kuffar, the non-believers, and the third group is munafiqin, the hypocrites, you know, are the one, those, you know, we'll talk a little later about them. The first group of people is called muna, is called mu'min. And our Holy Quran, it starts saying, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رِيبَ فِي هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنْزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنْزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُوقِنُونَ أُولَئِكَ عَلَى هُدًى مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Subhanallah, at the very beginning of the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing all the features of the mu'min. They are the people, those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unseen. We have never seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we believe in Him as ghaib, as unseen. We cannot see with our eyes, with these eyes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But as you know, our beloved messenger, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa salatu wa salam, when he went to Mehraj, when he went to Mehraj, he saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As you know, Sayyidina Musa alayhi wa salatu wa salam, he talked to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. So, there are so many things we ca you cannot see with your eyes, but we believe. Oxygen. We don't see oxygen, but we know oxygen exists. So, not only that, look at this coronavirus. How many of us have seen this coronavirus? You can see only with the help of the electronic microscope, but we believe and we see what this coronavirus is causing to us. So it's not necessary everything you have to see with your own eyes. And then you have to believe. So those people who believe in ghaib, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, without seeing him. Alif lam mim zalik al kitabu la raiba fi hudal lil muttaqin al-lazina yu'minuna bil ghaib wa yuqimuna salat after their belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they established salat. As we know, the salat, namaz, is our second pillar of our religion. This is very important, you know, rituals for the mu'min, for the believers. And from their halal earning, they always spend some money for zakat, for donation, for charity. This is a very essential part of our religion. And for the believers, they have to spend money for zakat and for charity. This is very essential from their halal earning. Then they have to believe in the books, all these, you know, the scriptures and the prophets and whatever in that books we believe in that we believe in akhirah afterlife and that belief should be very firm 
very strong faith, if that belief is shaky, then you are not considered as believers. So if you have all these things in, as in a nutshell, آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْقَدْرِ خَيْرِهِ وَالشَّرِّ مِنَ اللَّهِ تَعْلَى وَالْبَعْسِ بَعْدَ الْمَوْتِ These are the components of our faith that we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we believe in the angels, we believe in the prophets, we believe in the scriptures, we believe in akhirah, you know, we believe in our faith and we believe in resurrection. These are all the important components of our faith. And when you claim yourself as a believer, as a mu'min, you need to have strong faith in all this I mentioned. And akhirah, yakin, strong faith. How we explain? For example, three plus three is six. If somebody comes and tells you that it's four or it's seven, you will say no. Because three plus three is six. You are confirmed with that. So that's why it's very important for us to believe, to say that this is Akhira is there. And you don't have any hesitation you know, on that. So if you have a strong faith, then you will be considered as mu'min. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling, they are the one are guided. They are the one who will be successful in this life and after life. And then the second class of the people, those who do, don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What they say? They don't believe. They reject. They are atheists. They said everything automatically happened by nature. They don't accept the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't believe in the prophets. They don't believe in, you know, afterlife. إِنْ هِيَ إِلَّا حَيَاتُنَا الدُّنْيَا نَمُوتُ وَنَحْيَا وَمَا نَحْنُ بِمَبْعُوسِينَ They want to enjoy this life. And they don't say, we don't care what will happen after, after I die, after death. They don't believe in that. إِنْ هِيَ إِلَّا حَيَاتُنَا الدُّنْيَا نَمُوتُ وَنَحْيَا وَمَا نَحْنُ بِمَبْعُوسِينَ There are so many people today at our time, they are atheists. They don't believe in akhirah. They don't believe after a life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala categorized them as non-believers. Kuffar. Khatamallahu ala qulubihim wa ala sami'ihim wa ala abusarihim gishawatun wa lahum azabun azim. So, you know, I mean, no matter how you explain to them the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You bring so many miracles to them, but at the end, they will not believe. Because, you know, they are, you know, their eyes are sealed, their ears are sealed, and they will not accept enough anything, this truth. Their qalb has been sealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like Abu Jahl. He saw all these miracles. He saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallatu wa sallam, but he didn't accept. Because, خَتَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ سَمِعِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ أَبُصَارِهِمْ غِشَاوَةٌ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ Severe punishment is waiting for them, for those category of people. And then, the third category of people we'll talk about today, about the munafiqeen. There are another category of people, they claim that we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We believe in akhira. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling, no, they don't have real faith. They are not the believers. خَتَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ سَمِعِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ أَبْصَارِهِمْ غِشَاوَةٌ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَذِيمٌ وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ Look at this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, who knows what is inside in your heart. Halimun bizat is sudur. So somebody can claim, yes, I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I believe in akhirah. But in reality, he doesn't have that faith in his heart 
is not coming from his call. So Allah knows what is inside. That's Allah said, you know, he is telling that he believes in Akhirah, but he is not a mu'min. So who is he? He belongs to munafiqeen. That category of people, you know, they are Muslim, they claim, they live within us. You know, they will behave like a real Muslim. And they will show, if you look at them, with their dress, you know, they are praying behind the Imam. Their dress looks like real, you know, muttaqi. And all other activities they are doing. But you will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling, no, they don't have Iman. They are munafiqeen. They are hypocrites. And the punishment of the hypocrites is very severe, like the punishment of the non-believers. So brothers and sisters, Quran describes very clearly about the munafiqeen. Hudallil muttaqeen allazina yu'minna bil wayi wa yuqeemuna salata mimma radaqnahum min fiqun wallazina yu'minuna bima unzila ilayka ma unzila min qablik wa bil akhirati hum yuqinun ulaika ala hudam min rabbihim wa ulaika humul mufluhun Then you see besides that we are going further that this category of people munafiqeen they try to get the benefit from the mu'min. At the same time, they want to get benefit from the kuffar, from other. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling they are diseased, they are sick in their sickness, in their heart, in their qalb. Fi qulubihim maradun fazadahum allahu marada wa lahum azabun alimun bima kanu yakzibun. Because they are sick, their qalb is sick. And when you are sick, you cannot accept good things. For example, if you are physically sick, you have high fever, no matter how good the food is, you cannot, you will not eat it because you don't have the appetite because of your physical sickness. At the same time, the munafiqeen, they are called, their called is sick. So that's why they don't accept Allah and his messenger, Akhira, the, you know, the important good things. That is very good for them. They are not accepting. So this is the problem because they are sick, their heart, their call is sick. Brother, sister, if your call is sick, it doesn't matter. You know, the whatever way you try, they will not accept it. So there are some features that we can identify who is munafiqeen. This class of people, munafiqeen, they cause so much harm to our religion at the time of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallatu wasalam, and even today they are causing more trouble. You know, they are causing more trouble to our deen. So what are the features? How you recognize who is munafiq? إِذَا جَاكَ الْمُنَافِقُونَ قَالُوا نَشْهَدُ إِنَّكَ لَرَسُولُ اللَّهِ Wallahu ya'lamu inna ka la rasulu, wallahu yashadu inna al munafiqeen ala kazibood. This surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving the description of the munafiqeen. So the munafiqeen, they, whenever they say something, they always lie. They lie. They don't tell the truth. Number one, whatever they say, it lies. So imagine how many people among us today, they are Muslim, but they lie. They lie right and left. Brothers and sisters, the first important feature of the munafiq that he lies. Brothers and sisters, those munafiqeen in the battle of Wahud, you know, they didn't participate. They were sitting in, in Medina. And they are happy with the loss of the mu'min. Of the mu'min. But when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallatu salam returned to Medina, and they are showing sympathy, they are telling, we believe in you, you are the great prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, revealed to our prophet that they are lying. They are lying. Don't believe in them. So number one feature, whenever they say something, they lie. They lie all the time. Then another feature, that break their promise. 
They will promise you that they will do it, but they are not there. They are not there. We see among the politicians, before the election, they will come and they will promise, they will do all kinds of, you know, work for the community, but election is over, they forget about everything. They don't remember their promise. This is the sign of the hypocrites. A Muslim, whatever he promised, he has to fulfill it. But the Munafikin, they don't, you know, care about their promise. They break their promise. So this is very important feature. Brothers and sisters, you claim yourself as a Muslim, as a mu'min, you need to fulfill your promise. If you promise, you have to fulfill it. That the Munafikin, they break their promise. They don't care about their promise. Look at the example of the Prophet Ismail alayhi wa salatu salam, how he fulfilled his promise. One time, during his time, he promised somebody to meet a place. And Ismail alayhi wa salatu salam, he went to that place and that person was not there. So what he said? Maybe he forgot. He went second day again. Then he's not there. He thought maybe he forgot. Third day. In that way he went there three, 30 days. Look at this, Sahabai, the Prophet. You know how sincere to fulfill his promise because he told him that I'll meet you under that tree in that place. And that person didn't show up. But the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fulfill his promise, he went there, you know, one sec, first time, second time, up to 30 days. Subhanallah. That's how they are sincere about their promise. So that we have to learn that if you promise, I will help you, I'll do it, we have to do it. And then third feature, you know, if you keep some amana, they, you will not get it back again. And amana is a great term. For example, if somebody, you tell somebody, you know, this is confidential, it's between you and me, you know, after half an hour, everybody knows about this. He, you know, he doesn't keep that amana. He is giving, you know, he is telling everybody. Although you told, give him the condition that this is amana, sacred. Brother, I want to, you know, share with you. It should be between me and you. But, you know, right away, he's telling other people and it's going everywhere. So this is not acceptable. This is the feature of the munafiqeen. Our body, this is the amana. You know, we have, and then, Look at this. Our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was such a trustworthy. Before his prophethood, the kuffar, you know, they used to keep all their wealth, you know, jewelry, everything to him. People of Abu Jahl used to bring to the Prophet. That's how the Muslim should be. You should be. But the munafiqin, they are the ones. They don't care. So these are the main features of the munafiqin. إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ فِي الدَّرْكِ الْأَسْفَلِ مِنَ النَّارِ Subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling, you know, the place of the munafiqin under the, you know, deep in the hellfire, severe punishment. So we should check ourselves. Is it me? Do I have any features? Other features of the munafiqin, they are very lazy in their salat. You know, it's very hard for them to attain fajr and asha prayer. They are lazy, you know, doing their prayer, salat. So there are so many other features, brother, sister, if we remember these three main ones, that they lie. As a Muslim, you cannot lie. Number two, you cannot break your promise. Number three, you know, amanat, you should keep it and maintain that, subhanallah. And in our salat, we should always, you know, be sincere, khushu khuzu, with your heart, no, and... Very important to attain Asha and Fajr prayer because the Munafiqeen, they don't attain Asha and Fajr. It's very hard for them. So, brothers and sisters, we should you know, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us strong Iman and stay away from the features from the Munafiqeen. Inna al Munafiqeen afi dark al asfal min al nar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling our messenger that he should fight and be harsh against the munafiqin like the kuffar, like the kuffar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like the munafiqin.
today we see in our society among the Muslims, there are so many munafiqin around, and it's very hard to recognize. But you see, through these features, we need to recognize. You know, if you see from external features, he's praying, look at the dress, he's, you know, uh, eagle, even the messenger will not, sus you know, have any suspicion. But Allah knows that this person is munafiqeen. Brothers, sisters, this is very important for us that we should belong to the mu'min. We should stay away from the munafiqeen and we should not have those features. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to understand the truth and so that we can be a real mu'min. Wa akhidu da'an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for your attention watching. Thank you.